Hey guys, Pastor Jürgen here. We're so excited you're tuning into one of our amazing messages. What you're about to hear is going to be fresh, it's going to be real, and it's going to be powerful. It's going to help you to grow stronger in your walk with God. It's going to put faith on the inside of you. It's going to cause you to be able to walk in greater dimensions of blessing and enlargement so that you can be a blessing to other people. Well, lean in, enjoy the word. God bless you. I wanted to just share a few a few thoughts tonight and then, you know, at the end, um, pray for some more people. Um, but uh, in, every, in every season of time and in history, there are unique opportunities to take advantage of things, to take advantage of business opportunities or, or um, uh, different shifts in marketplace and different industries. And there's different opportunities throughout, throughout history. For example, in the late 90s, when the internet became a thing. Anybody remember the late 90s? The internet became a thing. I was at UCLA in college, and I remember my roommate, John Phillips, and he had got a email address, and he was emailing people, and I'm like, you're such a nerd. <laughs> like, who emails stuff? What even is that? And then I got my first email address, heiner32 at yahoo.com. And, uh, you know, I started becoming a nerd and emailing people. And... And, and, but little did I know that in the late 90s that this internet thing would take off, that there would be this boom on the internet. Little did I know that there would be people that would become instant billionaires like Mark Cuban with Yahoo. Little did I know that people would lose billions of dollars uh, speculating on what this internet thing could do. There was billions made and there were billions lost, but it was those who recognized the season that made the money. Those that recognized the season and went boldly into that season that actually made the money. And so, so then there came like the real estate boom in the uh, kind of, you know, 2003, seven era where everybody was making tons of money in real estate. And then um, if, you, if you didn't recognize that season early enough, like me, you lost a lot of money in 2008. I made a lot of money, and I lost a lot of money in 2008. But it was those people that recognized the season. I can remember um, dating this girl, and her brothers were buying real estate in Temecula. And I'm like, who the heck's going to move to Temecula? That is so dumb. And so I didn't buy anything in Temecula, even though I had the money, even though I was told what was going to happen. People are going to move up there. It's less expensive. That's where, that's where, you know, people are moving to. Even though I heard that, I still didn't do it. I didn't take advantage of it. I was scared. I was in fear. And so I didn't, I didn't make the money that they made. I didn't take advantage of the season. Now we're in, you know, cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and Ethereum and all these kinds of crypto. And, you know, I'm... I'm tiptoeing in right now to see if I'm going to take advantage and boldly go. And, you know, there are, but there are people that I know that have boldly gone and are making hundreds and thousands of dollars. And, you know, you hear about the people making tons of money because they've recognized the season. They've recognized the season. And it's the people that go boldly into that season and aren't afraid to disrupt things, aren't afraid to make a mistake, aren't afraid to challenge mindsets that get the advantage, that make the money, that get the breakthrough. Just like the world, same in the kingdom. Same in the kingdom. There's moments in time in the kingdom that if we recognize the moment, if we recognize the time, we could take advantage of the time. There are times in history where you see the, the great awakening in the 1700s where there's a great awakening of, of religion. And, the, the, and if you study that, it says that religion was very stale at the time. In other words, that people like, you know, had their had their hand towards religion, and that was actually the time where people recognized and people went boldly, and there was this, this great awakening of, of Christianity. There's this, the Azusa Street Revival, where the power of God came. Healings, miracles, salvations were everywhere, and it went on and on and on, and those people that recognized, those people that were flying in all over the world were getting a, an encounter with God. But the people that were like, what is that weird thing happening over there? Like, what is that thing? They didn't, they didn't encounter God. They didn't take advantage of it. They didn't recognize the season. So they, got, so they missed out. The Welsh revival. There's so many different revivals that happened. 
All moments in time where people stepped into what God was doing in the time he was doing it, and they saw exponential results. They saw exponential results. And then you read about people, I'm reading this book right now, Pastor Jake, called God's Generals. I read it when I first got here, and I'm kind of reading it again, and it talks about the people like John G. Lake and like Catherine Coleman and and people like Bosworth and T.L. Osborne and Oral Roberts and all these great men and women of God who, who decided to take a bold step specifically in the power in the power ministry. And because they did that, they saw signs, wonders, miracles, and now those are the people we're reading about. Those are the people that made history. The people that go boldly and recognize the seasons and the times are the people that we write about and read about in our history classes. The people that we learn about when we go to Bible college or we read books are those people that recognize the season and went boldly into them. Smith Wigglesworth, one of my heroes. I love Smith Wigglesworth. He said, if God's not moving, move God. That's bold. Sometimes you just gotta step out and do something and see if God's gonna follow you. Sometimes you just gotta lay your hands on somebody and see if heaven backs you up. Sometimes you just need to go off out on a limb and prophesy over somebody hoping that God's gonna confirm his word with signs and wonders following. But it's all those people that we read about. I believe that Awakened Church, I believe there's a time and a season happening right here and right now, specifically in El Cajon, in East County, that if we will go boldly, if we will recognize the season that God is doing, I believe they're going to write about this campus. They're going to write about this church. Come on, who's the next Pastor Michael Hunley? Who's the next ministers? Who are the next business people that we're going to read about? Are we going to go boldly? Or are we going to step back and miss out on what God is doing. Let's all get involved in what God is doing. The greatest, one of the greatest things I learned a long time ago in my Christianity, I was reading this book and they said, it was like experiencing God was the book. It was like this Bible study. And I was reading this this book and and, and, and what he said was, he said, the greatest thing that you can do as a Christian is look and see what God is doing and then join them. Don't try to do your own thing and try to figure it out. Like, what is God doing and join them? I got to tell you that God is doing something at Awaken Church. We're, we're expanding at crazy rapid paces. We're outgrowing buildings. We're buying buildings. We're moving into buildings. We're, we're starting prayer meetings in other cities. We're, 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 we're sending people to Baja and hundreds of kids are getting saved in Baja and just this last week, they, they saw a physical tumor shrink at the border. They were in, at the border for three hours, and um, little, little uh, eight-year-old girls are going out and ministering and getting people saved from our team going to buy. Like, God is doing something. God is doing something. In Esther 4.14, we've, we've kind of all maybe heard this, or a lot of us have heard this scripture, but Esther has a chance to go to the king and save the Jews. And Mordecai, her uncle, is like, you got to do it. You got to do it. And she's kind of questioning it. And he says this in Esther 4, 14. It says, for if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. And I felt this today as I was preparing that if we stay silent... Right now, in this time, because I believe this is a time that God is, if we stay silent, God will raise up another church. You know what Jesus said, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. You and I have the option to join him or not to join him. Do you want to be involved in what he is doing or do you not want to be involved in what he was doing? Do you want to be like me when I was, when I was younger and, my, and we would have to buy a gift for my mom or our friends? And my sisters would buy the gift and write my name on the card. And I would kind of get some credit, but it would feel weird on the inside. Don't be like that. Put some skin in the game. Be a part of what we're doing. Be a part of what we're doing. Don't sign someone else's card. What team can you get on? Come on, get here at men's prayer and start ripping open heaven. Get here on Thursday, women's prayer, the first one tomorrow. Well, let's start, to, let's start to make a difference. Let's start to make an impact. 
We already are. God is moving. But if we stay silent, God's going to raise up somebody else. We got to step into what God is doing. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet, who knows whether you have come to the kingdom. To the kingdom. Maybe, who knows, you have come to awaken. You have recently got saved. Maybe you've been born again into the kingdom. For such a time as this. For such a time as as this, this story never gets old to me because it challenges me. I don't wanna be silent, I don't wanna be on the sideline, I wanna be part of the move of God. I wanna be part of it when I, when I read, when my kids read about Awaken Church, when their kids read about it. I don't wanna be on the sideline, I wanna be part of the crew. I wanna be the one that bought the gift. For such a time as this, I was reminded of uh, just a, a week ago, we went to Yosemite, my family and I, and, uh, and took my kids, and um, I have three kids. My boys are 13 and 14, and my daughter is nine. And so we've, I've always wanted to go to Yosemite, never been on 47, never been to Yosemite. And my kids have no idea how cool it is. They're like, Dad, why do I want to go see a giant rock? Like, who cares? <laughs> Some of my boys are saying they're giving us grief all the way there. And I get it because we had to stop in Fresno. So they're like, Dad, where are we? Like, <laughs> My uncle lives in Fresno, so we stayed there. And, uh, and anyway, so then we go, to, we go to Yosemite, and I had never been. I didn't look up any photos. I didn't, I didn't know how to get there. I didn't know where to stay. I just got advice from people, and we booked an Airbnb, and then we booked a hotel. And so as we're driving in, there's this massive tunnel. I think it's like a mile long. And, and at, as you get to the end of the tunnel, there's something called the tunnel view. And it is this most gorgeous, picturesque view of Yosemite. You can see all the waterfalls. There are a few of the waterfalls. You can see El Cap. You can see Half Dome. It's just, it's just unbelievable. But when you start going through the tunnel, it's a long tunnel. It's kind of freaky. I'm like, are, do they check this once in a while? Like, how do they know who's the guy that first did the tunnel that I don't know how he how he did that but that's scary and so as you're going through the tunnel it would be easy to kind of be like uh yeah I don't want to do this I don't want to go through this mile long tunnel this is freaky this is scary it could come crashing down on me I've never done this before I don't know what to expect but if we would have stopped and turned around in the tunnel we wouldn't have seen the most beautiful landscape in all of the world maybe we wouldn't have seen El Cap which is the highest rock in the world the most famous rock in the world we wouldn't have got to hike to the most beautiful waterfalls in the world had we stopped in the tunnel like, I can see the end of the tunnel for awakening. Like, I can see that this is the time. I can see that this is the season. And I don't care if the bridge might, or the tunnel might crash before me. I'm believing God. Like, I'm too far into this thing to turn back now. Like, like, like we're, I'm two feet in, two, two hands in. I can't turn around anymore. I've given too much money. Like, I got to see this thing come to pass. Like, we're going all in. We're going all in. But we can't do it without the power of God. We are a church that believes in the power of God. If you remember, God sent all of his disciples to make disciples of all nations. But before he did, he said, I want you to wait in Jerusalem. I want you to wait for power. And in Acts 1.8, he says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you so that you can be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, until the ends of the earth. In other words, you cannot accomplish the assignment that I'm giving you without power. I don't care if your assignment is in the marketplace. I don't care if it's to be a mom, a dad. I don't care if it's to be an athlete or a musician. You can't do what God's calling you to do without power. If you can do it by yourself, it is not God. God doesn't give you power to do the possible. He gives you the power to do the impossible. So if what, if what you see from God is an impossible with man, then you don't need any power. You can do it by yourself. 
But I like doing things that aren't possible. I like, I like stepping out into the unknown. I was talking to Pastor Jake, and they're selling their house. And I said, where are you moving? He says, I don't know. I like that. I like that. That sounds like Smith Wigglesworth. If God's not moving, let's move God. Let's see. Let's see. Let's go step out into the unknown. Is God with me or isn't he? And God's going to bless them. I can't wait to hear the God story. We're in the same process. Come on, Jake. Let's pray for each other. I don't know where I'm going. But that's, that's, that's the place I like to be because it, it forces me to believe God. And when I believe God, I hear from God. When I believe, when I, when I believe God, I, I encounter God. He never leaves you by yourself. And even if you think you heard from him and you're doing something good, he's still going to be with you. People say, oh, 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 God didn't tell me to pray for that person. So I don't know if I should. You should. It's his will. He wants you to do good. He wants you to bless people. He wants you to step out in faith. So, so he says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you'll be my witnesses. And then in Acts 2, the day of Pentecost, which was last Sunday, I heard last Sunday was alive in here, on Pentecost Sunday, where the fire of God fell in the upper room and the power of God fell. Everybody started speaking in tongues and the fire came and everybody from all the region came in and they started to hear their, their own language and they were all freaked out and confused. That was the power of God coming on the church that birthed the church. And then you get into Acts 3, my favorite story in the Bible. Acts 3, verse 1. And it says, now Peter and John, so they just got filled with power the, the chapter before. It says, now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, three o'clock. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried. It doesn't even say who carried him. It doesn't even say what his name was. It just says he was a lame man. This lame man is a hero. He becomes a hero in the Bible, and he's just a certain man carried by certain people, and he's lame from his, from his mother's womb, whom they lay daily at the gate. The title of my message tonight is The Gate. It's The Gate. Whom lay daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. Which is called Beautiful. So there's this guy, lame from his mother's womb, 40 years and he's daily brought to this gate called beautiful. Now, beautiful in, in the Greek actually means, this, this word beautiful means belonging to the right hour or season. Timely. Belonging to the right season or hour, timely. Little did this guy know that every time he came to the gate beautiful, that it was his time and it was his season. It was his time and it was his season, but yet he was lame and he was carried there every single day. There are people driving by this church on a daily basis, driving by the, this, this fencing and this gate and it's beautiful and it's the right time for them. It's the right season for them. But they have no idea that there is power in the house of God to transform their life. It's the right time and the right season. The gate beautiful. And, he, and he's laying there and he's to ask alms or money from those who entered the temple. Who's seeing Peter and John who just got filled with power about to go into the temple, ask for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. Look at us. Man, when we go around this, this city, when you meet people, when you talk to people, make sure you, you, you engage with people. I love my wife, she talks to everyone. She tries to get everybody saved. It's fun going on open houses with her because every realtor is going to get invited to church. He's going to try to get them saved. My kids are like, Mom, come on, you have to talk to everybody. She engages with everybody. She knows what she has. She knows what she has. Fishing his eyes on him, he says, look at us. So he gave them 
his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle, ankle bones received strength. So he leaping up stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that this is he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Now as the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people ran to him uh, in the porch, which is called Solomon's, greatly, greatly amazed. This is one of my favorite stories because you have this, this, this man who's been lame for 40 years and he's at this gate and it's called beautiful. He's at the gate of breakthrough. It's his time and it's his season. It's his time and it's his season. And it was this particular day that Peter and John rocked by him and what triggered the power of God was his expectation that he would receive something. See, I feel like he knew that they had something that he wanted. He thought it was money. He didn't realize it was power. He didn't realize it was power. I believe that when Peter and John walked up to this lame man, there was an atmosphere around them that shifted this man. Because a couple of chapters later, Peter's walking down the street and his shadow was healing people. So I think as he walked up to this man, something shifted in this man. He looked at him and he said, what is it that these guys have? I want it. This is my time. This is my season. So he looked at him with expectation. And then when they grabbed his hand, he had to jump up. He had to do something. He had to get bold. It was his season. It was his time. And he went boldly into this season. And now we're reading about him in the Bible thousands of years later. It was his expectation that triggered the power of God. That brought heaven to earth. I feel like when I was preparing today that we're at a gate and it's beautiful. And it's our time and it's our season in East County. And I feel like the kingdom of God is about to explode out here. I feel like we're in the tunnel and we're going toward the most beautiful place in the world. And we have this opportunity to see something that we've never seen before. To take a territory in a land that's never been taken before. To see God do things he's never done before. We're at the gate. We're at the gate. What are we going to do about it? Are we going to get up? Are we going to jump up? Are we going to stay sitting lame? thinking, oh, it's not my time, it's not my season, I don't have enough experience, I've been lame for my whole life, I don't know the Bible good enough, I wasn't trained, or are we going to get up, are we going to recognize the season, are we going to be bold, are we going to be the people that they write about, that they read about, are we going to be the people that buy the gift, are we going to be the people that get to see what God is doing, I'll end with this scripture, And it's found in Romans, Romans 4. And it's Abraham, and he's like 100 years old, and God promised him a, a kid, and he's like, you know, I can't, I can't believe it. You know, he's, he's, he's 100 years old. His wife is 90. But it says, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, not considering his own deadness in his body or the deadness in his wife's body. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what God had promised, he was able to perform and therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness. Are we fully convinced today 
that God can do what he said he was going to do? Are you fully convinced that what God spoke to you, he can do? Is he able to do it? Are you fully convinced despite what has happened in the past, despite the failures, the struggles in the past, are you still fully convinced? Abraham's body was dead and so was his wife's, yet he was strengthened in faith. What? If we're going to take El Cajon and East County, we need faith. It's always a fight of faith. And so we need to be people of faith. We need to be people in the house of God every week, reading our word, worshiping God, getting in a connect group. I don't know about you, but I get faith when I'm around people. I don't know if Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would have gotten that fire if they went around some people. They might have backed off, but I think when they got around people, they said, okay, we can do this thing together. Peter and John went together to the gate beautiful. We need to be people of faith. Why don't you stand to your feet? We're going to close. I'm going to have the ministry team come up in just a minute. And I want you, if you you feel like you're at the gate, if you feel like you've been kind of holding back, or you feel like you've been hesitant to go boldly, or you feel like you're kind of one foot in and one foot out, I want you to come forward and get prayer. We need you. Maybe you came into the kingdom for such a time as this. Maybe you stumbled upon awakened church at such a time as this, because God has a call and a plan for your life. Why don't you just close your eyes? This is the other thing that I've been seeing lately. And it's found in Genesis when God makes male and female. And then he blesses them before they do anything. He blesses them. And then he says, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. When God creates things, he fills things. He created the heavens and he filled it with stars, the seas, and he filled it with fish. He created the the earth and he wants to fill it with people. But he wants to fill it with people who have power to take dominion and subdue. And I saw a picture of people of awakened church flooding into the house of God but then going out and filling the earth, going out and filling government seats, going out and filling businesses, going out and filling media, going out and filling education, going out and filling ministry and other campuses and going out and filling things. And And God said, it may not happen overnight, but you're gonna begin to fill influential seats in culture, and eventually all of the wickedness and evil will be driven out because the righteous will be in authority. So it's a filling of things and a disarming of principalities and powers. So I think God wants to fill East County with crazy spirit-filled, devil-busting believers from Awakened Church who were just crazy enough to go boldly into this season, who were just crazy enough to believe God, who are fully convinced that he can do what he said he was going to do. And he's going to fill the earth. And if if stupid laws pass in our government, it doesn't mean that people have to do them if we get there first. Just because there's an abortion law that says you can abort your baby up until they're born and then even after they're born doesn't mean people have to do it if we're filling the earth. If somebody righteous gets to a young lady before she makes that decision or a young man, they don't have to do it because we're filling the earth with righteousness. So if you're here today and with every eye closed and you've never given your life to Christ, maybe 
You've never said, Jesus, come into my life. I want to follow you. I want to surrender my life. I want you to be my God. Or maybe you're here and one time you did, but you've taken your life back. But today you're saying, you know what? I want to rededicate myself to you. Or maybe you're here and you're just not quite sure what would happen if you didn't make it to tomorrow. But tonight you want to secure your eternity in heaven. You want to be sure. For any of those three people with every eye closed, can you just lift your hand right where you are? I want to pray for you tonight. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Is there anybody else over here in the red? Thank you. God bless you. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, with every eye closed and head bowed, I want everybody in the building to repeat after me. And we're going to invite Jesus into your life. Say these words. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to die on a cross for my sins. Lord Jesus, tonight, I invite you into my life. And I ask that you would forgive me of my sins and that you would help me live a life that glorifies you. Tonight I declare that I am saved and heaven is my home. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, what an amazing word. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Hey, listen, for more information about our church, go to www.awakenchurch.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and download our app. It is amazing. It is chock full of incredible messages information about upcoming events and you can even support our ministry if you feel so inclined we loved having you with us today we look forward to seeing you again god bless you live a life that is transformative bye for now